Welcome to San Diego Market Movers, where we ask a panel of experts the questions you want the answers to. Let's see what the experts have to say. Welcome to San Diego Market Movers, and we're back with our friend Adam. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yes, it. Yes, yes. Okay, so, you know, I know you sell luxury real estate, yeah. and I'm excited to ask you this because it's a little different take on who we've interviewed so far. Okay. So, in luxury real estate, the market is different than anything else. Yeah. So, what are you doing to advise your clients now, sellers, that you know, maybe you didn't tell them six months ago, what do they have to prepare for in this market? Yeah, I think the really important thing to think about today is that you hear a lot of noise in the market from media and even other agents that aren't mm -hmm. really a student of the business, is that there's no generic answer for that. Okay. Because it's really market specific, mm -hmm. it's product specific, and it's, you know, it's, and it's how you price things. So, you know, before you could probably get away with just about any price, say, yeah. you know, February, March, April, and if you were even close, you'd probably get 10 offers and maybe it'd go over a little bit, maybe it'd go over a lot. Now you can, you know, you have to really be smart and it depends on the market. I do sell luxury and, you know, a lot of times the shifts in the market start at the at the luxury where it drops first. And right yeah. now we're actually seeing a lot of the reverse mm -hmm. just because inventory levels are still pretty low mm -hmm. in a lot of the markets I serve. Um, and yet demand is really high. Do you, you think know. like inflation maybe doesn't hit those higher net worth buyers and sellers? You know, there's a lot of factors. Obviously, uh, the shift of the market happened with inventory changes, interest rate, dramatic change, yeah, and a it. stock market volatility, yeah. right? All in like a six week period, we went from super low rates, everyone's stock accounts high as they've ever been and no inventory. And in six weeks, it basically went yeah. from in a lot of markets on, you know, not a lot of inventory, mm -hmm. but just normal inventory, which seems like a lot when you've had no inventory. And if you're depending on your stock account to be a part of your down payment, maybe you saw some pullback there, although there's been a lot of rebounding, but mm -hmm. it's bouncing around. So mm -hmm. people are being careful. Um, but a lot of people pay cash in, in my environment. Right. And so they don't care about interest rates so much. And so that's helped us not be too affected in a lot of our sales. But we do still have to advise our clients because depending the range of luxury from, you know, two and a half, three million to 10 million, those are different buyers and they're okay. different types of. So we have to advise on not what the last sale was. You know, mm. we really have to yeah, be and careful. Yeah, properties are so unique. You can't right. really advise So you have to be a really careful. Um, we have to set expectation on time. It's okay. not going to be minutes or hours or okay. even days. It might be weeks and even months possibly okay. now, which when you look at days on market, I looked at August stats, 27 days in mm -hmm. 92130 and 92014 and 92067, 27 to 35 days. That's still very short. Right. And that's kind of normal. That's like, normal. Mm -hmm. But that's still short for the rest of the world. Right. Like 27 to 35 days at three to $10 million is very- And ultimately very, you're in San Diego, your house is going to sell. We have a lot of demand. We talked a little bit last week about that there's a lot of people coming here. We're importing people in mm -hmm. San Diego. California is exporting as a state, but we're getting the benefit of our wonderful weather, everything we have to offer, all the tech companies, Apple's, you know, five million square feet, one company. Mm -hmm. And and then people that don't have to live in the Bay Area anymore in Los Angeles, they want to live here. Why not? We're right. still the lowest price of the four major markets. So but we do have to set expectation. It's very important the client understands we're not going to put it on Thursday and have eight offers by Sunday. That's yeah. not going to happen. I did have a home that we got 10 offers within a week, but it was just <laughs> very unique. Yeah. And it was a single story and it was new condition and yeah. it was on a canyon. And, it, and we had all the marks mm -hmm. and we did get multiple. But then I have other homes that we thought would sell maybe in two weeks and we're on week three. Yeah. I'm not nervous, but we have to be smart. Yeah. And so just letting your clients know like, hey, this is expected your timeline might be look like this and so it kind of eases the fear of like I'm not I might have to yeah take a loss or something you know the thing is is that you can do different things I've heard a lot of creative solutions I really like listening to lenders off talking about seller paid mm -hmm. buy downs mm -hmm. which is something maybe the lenders here will talk about mm -hmm. that's an opportunity where a seller can pay some money to buy down the, le uh, the buyer's rate for say mm -hmm. two years and that will help them get through this fear of this higher rate. Maybe that's affecting yeah. their, and that's probably less money, like 30, 40,000 versus mm -hmm. a $200,000 price reduction. So right. there's things like that. Um, I believe the market is always looking for price reductions right now. I've seen it. I had it it's happen. True. We're closing today on a property 
at three million eight hundred sixty-five thousand. It's a luxury home. It's the lowest price home in this neighborhood, but it's still a luxury home. We started at three million nine ninety-five. Okay. Okay. We knew it was aggressive, but we said, let's see what the market says. We had slow activity. We waited two weeks to see the activity. We dropped it one hundred and seven thousand, and we got almost a full price offer. The market wants to see a deal. Mm -hmm. We still got a great price for this home. And the Buyers still happy. Made a sell it. Huge profit. Yeah, they paid two million eight twenty-five one year yeah. ago. So, you know, did we want to do that? No, but we were prepared knowing where we were in the market not to be. And I think there was people waiting and it worked. As soon as it happened, we had eight showings. We got two offers. We sold it. Closing today, in fact. So, um, But I think you have to just be careful and be smart about your strategy. Maybe you build that in mm -hmm. and you have dialogues about if we don't have the activity or offers in the next two to four weeks, we should pre be prepared and already discuss that mm -hmm. next price and ba bake it into your strategy. Yeah, and this is a market you don't hire a fly-by-night realtor. you got to have a realtor with ex you know experience, in, especially in the luxury market. It's yeah. not anything that you, you know, can know. I with. know that sellers wanted to say they could do it themselves or hire a discount <laughs> broker. Not and in this market. In some environments, that might have been true, but I never agree with that because you could got even more. Right. So yes, they could sell it. Yes, they could sell it, but did they get you top dollar? Did you they get you with no... Know. Yeah, they didn't know because they were so happy with what they got. Yeah. In this environment, you definitely want someone that knows what's going on, is studying the market, knows the trends, knows the people, and knows how to overcome the objection. You know, buyers are starting to get aggressive on their ask again. You know, before they're like, I'll take it with all contingencies. Yeah. Now it's like, okay, I want this. I want, so you have to know how to navigate that. I love it. So. You're always a wealth of information and knowledge. So glad come to back. be here. Come back next week. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Hey everyone, welcome to San Diego Market Movers. I am so excited. I'm sitting here with my good friend, Alma. Welcome. Hi, how are you? I'm it's so good. Great so good to, to see be you. Here. Yes. yes. Thanks for coming. So I have been asking and, you know, our audience wants to know, how are, I mean, this is a different market, right? So how are you? You have loads of experience. You know this market in and out. You know San Diego in and out. How are you advising sellers now versus six months from now or before? Six months ago. Very fantastic question because it's so relevant to what's going on yeah. right now. So obviously the market has completely changed from January to now completely different markets, right? So uh, really what I'm telling my clients is this, and I've always told them we want to price where the market is. Mm -hmm. Now though, I just need to have a conversation with them from the very beginning to let them know, and they're aware, mm -hmm. the market has changed. Obviously, we're dealing with higher rates, right. and we're dealing with inflation. Yep. So I have a conversation with them and let them know that we really need to look at what the sales have been in the recent, very recent months. Okay. We look at those sales, and then we compare those homes very closely to theirs, to get an idea of where we need to price their home. Right, so you can't really say, you know, my neighbor sold for X amount of dollars. It's like, well, they sold in December of 2021. Like, exactly. it was different. I mean, there are even sales, I think the, the sales right around, that closed right around February, even at the very beginning of March. Mm -hmm. After that, from April on, new market mm -hmm. completely so those are really the only sales that we are uh, looking at mm -hmm. so in talking to them I let them know that we have that very real conversation of where the uh, market is and then I also let them know that one of the things that sellers can do to help a buyer because bottom line is I've been in lending for a long long time before real estate right. and that's where yes. we met um, and so the bottom line is, is that interest rate, higher interest rate means higher payment. Mm -hmm. So what I'm suggesting to my sellers is that they might be open. Number one, they have to be flexible to whatever the market is calling for, mm -hmm. but also be open to offer a credit to that buyer so that buyer can use that money very specifically to buy down that rate. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, is when the rates went up, a lot of buyers who qualified in that price range now do not. Mm -hmm. Now some of those have fallen away. Yeah. So it's become actually a very balanced market, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do still want to be sensitive to the fact that uh, people might be stretching a little bit to still get into that home, which is perfect for them. Mm -hmm. And so as a seller, we want to be uh, open 
to helping them do that by offering them maybe a credit so they can buy down that rate, bring down that payment, mm -hmm. and get into their home. Cause yeah, and you're still making incredible profits right now because yes. values from 2019 till now are still crazy high. So as a seller, you're maybe not making a $100,000 profit, crazy amount of money, but you're making a profit. You guys, and Alma has seen all of these markets. You've been in the business for a long time. You've seen, you know, when we had our Armageddon in 08, you Ooh. went through that. But it's it's good to have an agent that has been through those different markets because you know how to, you know, advise these sellers properly. This isn't new to you. You've seen this before. It's not like 08, but you've seen it before. And I know our sellers are still making money, right? Absolutely. They are still making a great profit. We've had... We've had great gains mm -hmm. in the oh, yeah. few Huge. recent years, right? So those sellers are still going to make a profit. And uh, the one thing about having gone through different markets is that you realize that, hey, even though the interest rates are at five, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, they're not eight. Right. And that's where they were. Yeah. I remember them coming down from eight to seven to six and boy when they came down to six everybody was celebrating <laughs> and then they just continued to go down nobody expected right, that right it so couldn't last forever we it couldn't last forever and so now again as i mentioned we're going back to a more uh balanced market and i think it's a win-win for I everyone it's not the worst case and so uh having had a lending background definitely does Helps help yeah. because i can uh, advise clients uh accordingly okay so the next thing I want to ask you is you have a big event coming up, right? A Women's Council event. Can you tell us about yes. it? Yes. Okay. So thank you for that. Yeah. Yes. So Women's Council San Diego. We uh, are everything having to do with women in real estate and empowering them into leadership. Mm -hmm. So one event that we have coming up next Friday, the 23rd from okay. 5 to 7 at the Kona Kai Resort. Yeah, so, so it's fun. a fabulous resort. And it is a meet the candidates event mm -hmm. so you'll be able to come and meet candidates that are running for office so they're going to be on the ballot mm -hmm. um everyone from brian jones to uh oh, jordan wow. marks okay. i mean we've got lots of people who will be that. there so come by meet them ask them questions because again these are people who are making decisions that directly affect mm -hmm. our market. Right. So it is good to be an informed agent so that you can properly advise. Do you advise. need to buy a table? You don't need to buy a table. Okay. It's free. Okay. It's free. Uh, we, I will get, get in contact with me. You'll have my information shortly. Get in contact with me, and I'll give you the Eventbrite link. We do need you to register just so that we know that you're okay. coming so that we can properly prepare. But absolutely, I want to go. come and see us. All right. Thank you, Alma. You're you're welcome. Here. Thank you guys for watching. Hey guys, welcome back to San Diego Market Movers. I'm your host, Valley, and I'm back with Chris. Welcome. Hi, thank you, Valley. Good to see you yes, again. Yes, yes. Okay, so last week we had a question. This week we want to talk about the Sweet. sellers in this market. Mm -hmm. How are you advising sellers and setting expectations in this market versus maybe the beginning of this year? Right. Well, as you know, I think we're all aware there's been a shift in the market, but not necessarily in every single, you know, community. Okay. So I think you really have to be ultra targeted with what your little hyper local market is mm -hmm. doing so that you can, you know, kind of educate that seller accordingly. I do think there's still there's some sellers out in the community they're still not quite up to speed of where the how the market has yeah, changed. Yeah, they still think it's yeah, um, you know, and a little bit, has that ship sailed? Yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is it still a great time to sell? You know, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, to expect to your property to go on the market and have, you know, multiple offers within four days, no. Um, we're getting to a more, you know, a, a, a more normalized looking market. I mean, a normal market inventory is six months of inventory on the market. Yeah, we are nowhere there. near that. Right. We're at one point, you know, 1.4 months of inventory in San Diego County. Okay. So we're still, you know, um, in what is considered a very so robust what that, market. What that means mm -hmm. then is that your house will sell, somebody will want it, and as long as you're priced right, somebody will buy it. Pricing is Quickly. always very key in, in, in any market, mm -hmm. really. So I think, you know, understanding where your hyper-local market is trending, mm -hmm. you know, are things still selling for over market? And mm -hmm. if they are, how were they priced originally? Were they yeah. priced below market? Yeah. Because then you can expect maybe over market or over the list price. 
But if you were if you were really trying to push your list price, mm -hmm. um, you might be looking at making some price adjustments. And you know we don't really know with you know a hundred percent certainty what that buyer demand is because there is still buyer demand out yeah, there. That's true. You, you don't know what it is. You could have a property that you know there could be four or five people really that have been waiting for this particular property to come on the market. That's what most sellers like to think. Yeah. But there could also be other people who are looking at four and five different places along with yours. Right. So I think it's really about, you know, pricing it well, looking at the trending in the marketplace, and, and really, uh, you know, anything under 750000 you know, that's the market segment that's more impacted by this okay. shift okay. because of interest rates. You mm -hmm. know, you have, these are a lot of first-time home buyers. These are a lot of dual incomes that are trying With to qualify. Minimal down. Yeah, they're trying to qualify, and guess what? You know, their their price point is just shifting downward as the interest rates go up. Over seven fifty, over a million in San Diego, you know, the interest rate is typically not going to have as big of an effect. Mm -hmm. So again, like I said, you kind of have to really recognize what what property you're working with, educate mm -hmm. that seller to their market, because a lot of what we see in the in the headlines and you know their overall market numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, they're and too you general, really can't too paint the whole picture with the same brush. How often yeah. do you check your listings price to make sure it's right? Do you check every day, every week? Um, I wouldn't say every day, you mm -hmm. know, probably once, you know, a good once a week, you know, okay. to keep track. And it depends on where, you know, if there's a lot that are on the market, which mm -hmm. hasn't been our case. If there's a lot on the market, then checking regularly okay. because did something go into escrow and, you know, can I find out any information on how many offers they had Got or, it. you know, whatever. But if there's very few things on the market, you know, um, probably, you know, minimum once a week. Got it. Yeah. And I communicate with my sellers at least a couple well, times I know a week. you do. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for sharing yeah. that. We love having you on the show. You always have a wealth of information, so I thank appreciate you. that. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I appreciate the opportunity. Yes, of course. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Welcome to San Diego Market Movers, and I am sitting here today with Hennish. Welcome. Thanks, Valley. How's things going? Appreciate you having me. I'm doing good. Yeah, very good. Happy to be yeah. here. And so you kind of have a jack of all trades. You have your hand in a lot of different avenues in the market. So I'm curious to ask you, right? This is a different type of market than we were in six months ago. How are you advising sellers and setting expectations with this market versus six months ago? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. And it has changed, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, as I've dealt with sellers throughout this year, uh, the expectations have to be changed as well, right? Earlier this year, you could price five, 10, 20% higher than your neighbor's property and probably get it. Mm -hmm. You know, today you cannot. Um, and so you have to set the price in, in realist realistically and it comes down to the realtor, the broker to do their due diligence. So what I'm looking at a seller's listing, uh, I spend a little bit of extra time canvassing the area, seeing what other properties are doing. And not just that, I'll call every single broker that has a property for sale pending or just sold mm -hmm. and say, how was the demand for that property? Right. Did you get a lot of showings? Did you get a lot of offers? And that should give me some indication of what I can expect from my property if it's going live this week. A little legwork up front before you list for so sure. that you make sure you hit the target for this property that for you're sure. about to list. Absolutely. And I think it's a, a good tactic to use because one, you're working. Mm -hmm. Two, when you go meet your seller, you can say, hey, I talked to four other brokers that just sold houses in your neighborhood and here's what they experienced on the demand last week. How is this setting hitting with sellers right now when you come to them with this information that maybe they think we're still in the market we were six months ago? Um, you know, people have blinders to negative news, right? Okay. And so uh, you just have to be realistic about it. And so me personally, because I have investment properties that have hit the market and they're not flying off the shelf like they used to mm -hmm. a few months ago, I'm thinking of backup strategies for them, okay. right? Uh, other things that you can do as a seller is considering alternatives to encourage your buyers mm. to work with you. For example, a seller carry. Okay. Right? Oh, yeah. Right. That's an option that you might consider and say, okay, cool. Well, I want to get X hundreds of thousands of dollars out of the sale, but maybe I could let the seller or the buyer have a two hundred thousand dollar loan that they're going to pay me interest on mm -hmm. until they're able to refi me out of it. I like that because you are, as a buyer and seller and as an investor, you're kind of going through the same psychological things that a seller wa was, except I guess you have a little more inside knowledge, but you have dealt with those same emotions and those same thoughts that now firsthand you can kind of convey to those sellers. Absolutely. No, you're right. And so because I do it myself, I think it's one of the selling points that I make when dealing with uh, a retail client is, hey, 
I'm not just telling you what to do. I do it myself. Right. And I've got properties on the market that I'm yeah. buying and or selling personally with my own money. Uh, and so I have to think of alternative solutions and strategies and do this extra legwork because I want to see my properties perform well right. and sell well the same way I would for my clients because right. I'm, I'm a fiduciary to you. Yeah, so you know how it feels. And right. It's easy to relate to your sellers, right? For sure. And so, you know, I've got a property that's not selling. I love the location. I think it's a dream property. But I think buyers in the sidelines thinking something's going to happen. Right. Um, so my backup plan on that is to turn it into a rental. Okay. And it should cash flow nicely. Add some ADUs in a couple years. And now it's really cash flowing. Uh, and I'll have an investment that I'm happy about one to two years from now. But for right now, it's like you just have to ride it through. Yeah, I like that because you take your experience and knowledge from all different avenues that you have kind of a hand in in the market and are able to really successfully advise a client. Yeah, I mean, you know, because this is how real estate works. There's ups and downs, but at the end of the day, right. overall, it works in the long run. Yeah. Um, and so if you have a seller that's really motivated to sell, then you just have to set the expectations right. If you can have them – you know, be flexible and offer special terms to buyers, then right. there's an option there. Otherwise, you know, there's always the option of renting it and trying it again in a year. I love that idea, the, the rental idea. It gives a, another little perspective, so appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just different strategies. You have to think of all the options, and sometimes I like to give people good ideas and bad ideas, and yeah. that way we can filter down to just the good ideas. Oh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you for being here, and thank you guys for watching. Thank you. Welcome to San Diego Market Movers. I'm your host, Valley, and I'm sitting with Jeff Leal. How are you Welcome. doing? How Thank are you? you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing yeah. very well. Thank good, you. Good, good. Okay, so question is, everybody's wondering, how are you, as an agent, approaching your sellers and setting expectations now? Because this is a different market than it was six months ago. Yeah, it definitely is absolutely a different market than what it was six months ago. Things are changing. Interest rates are changing. Uh, and so I think, you know, a, as a great agent, you mm -hmm. also have to adjust seller expectations. Right. Uh, as we all encounter and all see on, you know, third party real estate sites, homes are sitting longer yeah. uh, and we're seeing a lot of price drops. So setting that seller expectation off from day one is critically important uh, mm -hmm. because what we value ourselves and what we pride ourselves on uh, in our group at JPL Real Estate Group. Um, is meeting our ex uh, client's expectations, especially with sellers. Okay. And so um, what we do is, you know, one of the things we do is we don't look, we don't hold too much value right now in comps in terms of what has sold maybe three months ago or okay. six months ago or okay. eight months ago because that market's come and gone, right? right? We are in a new market. And so what we do with our clients is we meet with our clients and talk about what the future market's going to be, mm -hmm. you know, be bringing us. Um, so that's definitely one thing that we do. I like it. It's kind of like, you don't want to chase the market, right? You want to price appropriately for now and for maybe a month to come. That's right. And uh, I would say, you know, time is of the essence, mm -hmm. right? Because what realtors know and what we all know is that once October 31st hits with Halloween, oh, yeah. holidays come. Then we yeah. got Thanksgiving. Then we got Christmas. Then yeah. we got New Year's. And so uh, with all of the... Oh, that is a good point. What's happening with all the market in addition to the holidays that we're going to be expecting, obviously, to come... Uh, is really going to throw uh, a curveball mm -hmm. uh, to sellers in this market. Yeah, and I didn't even think of that, that it is probably buyer demand will slow down a little bit. It always does. Buyer demand is already slowing down because buyers are getting squeezed right now, especially those taking you know a loan on the, you know, mm -hmm. on the purchase because of interest rates. Um, yeah. We've seen a lot of our own clients have to put their purchase on hold because they got priced out. Mm -hmm. um, affordability is going down for buyers. So it's critically important for sellers to understand what kind of the global economy or the U.S. economy is doing as a whole, and then we take it a step further to bring in the hyper local market. What happens if they don't listen and they just want to they want to list it and see see what happens? Well, that's a great thing about us is you know we we move as fast as our clients want to move, okay. and we've been very fortunate enough to have clients trust in our professional judgment okay. uh, and expectations. Now. If a client does not heed to our advice, uh, you know, we make it clear to them that, hey, like, we may be having a conversation about pricing in two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, should we list at the price that you want to list at? Now, our goal is obviously to exceed seller expectation, right? Uh, it doesn't do us any good if we can't help our clients sell their house. Yeah. Um, but we make it very clear, you know, we're, we're not necessarily pressuring them to do something they don't want to do. Um, so if they want to price it at a number that, mm -hmm. you know, that we feel like is a little bit high, again, we're not the buyers, right? Mm -hmm. The buyers are out there. Yeah, but the buyers kind of dictate this market. Exactly. What the home is buyers worth. dictate what a house price is worth. Mm -hmm. um, so what we do on our side is to make sure that we take care of everything that's within our control 
in terms of the condition of the house, how the house shows, the marketing in terms of how it views online and mm -hmm. online presence and SEO marketing and so forth. We do what we can within our control right. to try to help our seller, right? Yeah. Capture that right buyer who's willing to see that price that they want. Uh, but we just make it very clear to them, hey, you know, we will have another conversation in a couple weeks if, you know, uh, your home is not getting the activity that it deserves. Um, and, you know, really it comes down to condition and price. Right. I love that you take, it seems like you take this very seriously. And I, it's important in this market that you mm -hmm. have somebody that represents you in the sale of your property to have somebody that takes it that seriously. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thankful for that, that you're in the market helping these sellers out here in this climate. Yeah, for sure. And, and that's the thing that we, you know, take pride on, uh, about our group, right? Yeah. We're not here just to say words or to, you know, make commitments that we can't fulfill. Yeah. Right. Cause not just for the real estate lifestyle, but you're here to oh, really for sure. help people. It's a life cha changing experience. Right. You know, when someone's wanting to sell a house, like there's a lot of facets that go into it. Yeah. Um, and you know, we try to take the stress out of the, the sale of their home mm -hmm. uh, because there's so many things that a seller's thinking about, right? Uh, potentially they're moving out of state or moving somewhere else and they got kids and they got mm -hmm. school and they got, you know, homeschool. There's so many different facets that, you know, that we unfortunately can't help with, but what we can help with is the real estate side. Yeah, you take into And so we just try to make it, it as seamless and as smooth as possible. For awesome. Them. Well, thanks, Jeff. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. And thank you guys for watching. Welcome to San Diego Market Movers. I'm your host, Valley, and I am blessed to be sitting on the couch here with Jim McInerney. Welcome. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, of course. Okay, Jim, you've got loads of experience in real estate. So one of our questions is, how are you advising sellers now, setting expectations now versus what you were six months ago? You know, now we're setting more realistic timelines of how long it could take to get an offer. So we're bumping that out dramatically. Um, we're also letting sellers know that it's there's a chance that you might go in escrow, fall out of escrow. Mm. Um, it's not 100% weighted in the seller's favor. Mm -hmm. um, we may have to give some concessions and do some repairs where in the past the sellers gave no concessions, the property sold over list. Yeah. I'm telling sellers that if their house is worth two five, we may want to price it at two million four fifty. Mm -hmm. Because the market is adjusting, you've got to show value to the buyers up front. Mm -hmm. And that kind of is what we've always done, right? We've always yes. kind of listed right beneath of course. Uh, the value. Of course. And so this is just Getting normal. back to normal. Yeah, and it, but it's also like a psychological reset for people. We've been kind of tricked the last three years. Not 100%. tricked, but we've been in a different market. So people got used to that. Yes. And now they have to go revert back to what was. Yeah, and the revert isn't even that bad. No. All the houses are still selling. Right. which sometimes in the past they wouldn't. It would right. just expire, and you'd have to go through two or three agents before it got sold. So we're headed back to normal, but it's still a wonderful market. But you can't be goofy anymore as mm -hmm. a seller mm -hmm. and think you're going to get what your neighbor got six months ago. Those days are gone. And I think the challenge is a lot of these sellers have still not even realized that the market has shifted mm -hmm. as of six months ago. Right. So there's still a yeah, lot of takes, people like coming a, to the table. A delay. There's like a little yeah. slug in the in uh, people getting it. Yes. Just like when interest rates rise and they're slowly rise. They're, well, they're, I guess they're they're rising quickly. Yes. But it takes people that are in the market buying and refinancing oh, maybe a month or two for it to really hit where 100%. people realize, you know, oh, it's a lot higher than I thought it was, well, and it, it takes a while. You're right. I mean, we're hypersensitive to it mm -hmm. because we're in every the industry day. every day and we're dealing with people in the industry. Right. But your normal consumer has a job and a life and children and, yeah. you know, they're just getting little snidbits mm -hmm. of news. Yeah. But um, so, yeah, we're, we're setting different expectations with our clients. And so I also wonder how for you it's been with sellers taking in that information. How are they reacting? Um. Not well. <laughs> it's pretty much everyone's saying that. Yeah, like almost you have to club them over the head. No. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I haven't done that in years. Uh, most of them are not taking it well. Most of them don't want to accept mm -hmm. the fact that they may have missed the peak. Yeah, because we're still in that transitionary period where right. they're realizing what values are. Yep. Yeah. And so, you know, I had a client say, oh, that one sold in the peak. And I'm like, no, it closed three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. you know, and the peak was six months ago. Mm -hmm. 
So I would say most sellers are not taking it well, but it's slowly changing. It's like changing the Titanic. Well, I always like to say too, I mean, if you look at it, if you were to sell at the peak, you're also probably going to buy at the peak again. Mm -hmm. But if you're selling now and those buyers have a little bit more pull and a little bit Mm -hmm. more to, you know, say in how the sale goes, you become a buyer eventually. And now you're in that position. So they all, the, the, each market kind of washes itself, right? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, so yeah, that, I that means just something to think about. But I, I'm excited to see how this market transitions again. You've been in the market for, you've been in the industry for a while. Yeah, so. you know, the interesting thing is just because it's transitioned, there's still a market. There's always a market. Right. You know, it's like a stock that's trading at 120 is now trading at 109. Uh-huh. But it still trades thousands of shares a day. You right. just have to price it at 109. You can't ask for 120 when it trades at 109. So we shouldn't be too worried. We shouldn't be worried at all. Right. It's still a fantastic market. We live in San Diego, California. Yeah. One of the most desirable places in the world. Mm -hmm. And interest rates are still historically low. Honestly, and we have it an inventory. might be the most desirable place in the world. If you I look at how so. other cities, major cities yeah. are going right now, I mean, I don't want to be anywhere else but San Diego. I agree with and you 100%. Have every, all tech and big things coming. We have military it's here. Very so exciting. our values are always going to stay somewhat stable. And we I can think always COVID recover. really put San Diego on the map once and for all mm-hmm. because of the weather and the climate and the lifestyle. That's right. Every, the whole world saw it. Well, and I love how much experience you have. So you're the one to go to to buy or sell. All right. I'll take it. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for being here so much. Thank you for having me. It's Thank you for watching. Welcome to San Diego Market Movers. I'm your host, Valley, and I'm sitting with my friend, Lisa Miller. Lisa Miller Carnation. (laughs) There you go. Welcome. (laughs) Thank you for having me. Yes, thanks for coming. Okay, Lisa, you know everything about real estate. You know loans, you know sales, you've done it all. So right now, these buyers, people have some money saved up. I think most people have a little bit of money saved up. Yes. But... There's not room for closing costs. The banks aren't paying closing costs. So and how, they yeah. need money to probably buy the rate down. Since you can buy the rate shops, down so. or, you know, buy furniture. Yeah. Everything's so expensive. So what can we do to help buyers get into a home with maybe zero down? Yeah, that's what I really want people to understand is there's options out there. So now I know lenders like you have great programs out there with zero yeah. down. So you could do, right, a new mm-hmm. FHA loan with zero down and that's going to be able to let someone come in and be able to pay their own closing costs, Mm -hmm. buy their interest rate down, or just be able to have some reserves and buy some furniture when they move in. But they literally could come in with zero down payment. And so I want home buyers out there to understand that is an option because for so long that went away. Yeah. And people get fearful that, Hey, what's the gimmick? I mean, it's a 30 year fixed rate. You can have a 600 credit score. I mean, there's not really a whole lot of... Plus, I think I read if you keep the house for 10 years, Mm -hmm. the second could be forgivable Mm -hmm. on some of those down payment options. Yeah, and other programs like that in San Diego and California, they have income caps. This program doesn't have an income cap. You can make whatever you need to make. Exactly, and so people have been so focused on just a veteran that Mm -hmm. uses a VA loan can buy a house 100% financing. But for us, Mm -hmm. now there's an option for someone who hasn't been in the military to be able to come in and buy a home with zero down. So I really think people need to know that. And Mm -hmm. call me if you need to know your options. I can help you walk you through like what you need to do and get you to a lender who offers these kind of programs. And it used to be kind of fearful for sellers to accept an offer like that because they're afraid that maybe it'll fall through. It's not they don't have any skin in the game or any money into it. But the truth is that it's like a regular loan. The process is the same, um, and we kind of streamlined it where it's quick and easy for the buyer and the agent, so they don't really feel, you know, we're not having to ask uh, the county for approval. Or like, remember before when we did the CHADAP and all those down payment programs, you had to get your loan fully approved, then they had to send it off to the state to get Mm -hmm. the approval for the down payment assistance. Not anymore. You just as a lender can say, okay, this works Mm -hmm. and get it done. Yeah, and when rates drop, we can refinance you out of it and get you. Exactly. And Ultimately, in San Diego, property values just keep going up. So I know that it, people feel like we're in a lull and things are, are you know, just devastating this morning. It's not no. the case. We're still appreciating, and it's San Diego's always going to come back, right? Exactly. And we may see a little bit of a downturn right now, but it's just a little price correction. Mm-hmm. It's not a market crash like we saw mm-hmm. in 2008, right? Mm-hmm. So once it corrects itself, and then if they do bring rates back down and people can start refinancing – we're going to see those values go right back up. And these people buying with 100% financing are going to have equity in their homes. Yeah. And they can refinance, get rid of their mortgage insurance, lower yeah. their rate, lower their payment, and you're in the and nice they, home with equity. And they needed zero down. That's so. rad.
yeah, yeah. thanks for bringing that to our attention. Yeah. I didn't even think about that, so thank you. Yeah, of course, and thank you for having me. And you guys, she's amazing at what she does, and she'll always <laughs> find loan options. <laughs> so, yeah, give us a call, and we can get you guys hooked up. Thanks, you guys, for watching. Welcome to San Diego Market Movers. I'm your host, Valley, and I'm sitting back again with Marianne. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I love having you here. Thank you. Okay, so this market, what we're dealing with in this climate has really shifted, and we want to talk about that. So what are you doing as a listing agent? Because you have quite a few listings. What are you doing as a listing agent to advise your sellers now in this market versus six months ago? Well, six months ago, we were still in the, like, crazy market, you know, competitive offers, um, multiple buyers trying to outbid each other, trying to get into the marketplace. Although we knew the interest rates were going up. So like there's this push to get there. Mm -hmm. Well, kind of what's happened, um, you know, it's hard to say where the six month mark is, but I look at like, I've always tried to tell my sellers, you really don't want to overprice your property. You Never. don't want people that are going to overbid they're well they're not going to get in a bidding war with a property that's overpriced right whether it's a good market or a bad market yeah. or a sliding or declining or increasing market um, so a lot of that is the same it's like let's find look at our current competition mm -hmm. let's go ahead and price it appropriately mm -hmm. so you can get the most eyeballs on it and people that are going to want to make an offer now the challenging part was like this summer right mm -hmm. if you're putting properties on the market right in the middle of the summer where the market shifted but the data hadn't really shown up yet yeah and so it was really hard to have those conversations well your property was worth this much like two months ago but it's not but is it like mm -hmm. where's the data that mm -hmm. shows it isn't well now we're in september so the, the market there. shifted mm -hmm. it's there so now you're having to have those harder conversations with people and new listings that come on the market well now you have data to say hey the market has shifted your days on market are longer um your pricing is more aggressive you know mm -hmm. so if people want to get it sold they need to be priced under their competition okay so. so you said something that kind of struck with me because a lot of i hear a lot of realtors say they price their newest listing based on the most recent like sold but you're talking about look because you're not the only mar house on the street anymore you're talking about pricing accordingly to what's active, like to what's your competition. to your competition, which is what's listed for sale right now. Absolutely. So I'm going to tell my sellers, I want you to put yourself in your buyer's shoes, right? To pretend you're out in the marketplace looking for a house, right? What's going to make them want to buy your house mm -hmm. over the guy that's listed down the street? Are you priced better? Do you look better? Mm -hmm. You know, what's going to make you want to buy that particular house more and a lot of times always price is going to be an issue mm -hmm. plus the amenities to it so you have to look is it on a busy street does it have a pool does it have a view does it need a lot of work maybe it doesn't maybe it's move in ready but at the end of the day whether you're going up in value or down in value mm -hmm. if you're always putting yourself in i would call it um, in a position to compete with what's actively on the market then you're going to do well Oh my gosh, it's, it's so good because it's a different approach from what we've been hearing that you have to kind of look at what else is yeah. actively listed because there are multiple properties listed now. Absolutely. Not the only one. And it's what the buyers see, right? Yeah. So absolutely. I love it, Marianne. Well, thank, thank you. you for being here and sharing that because it's a different perspective we haven't heard yet. So oh, appreciate it. Glad I could contribute. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Yeah, thank you. Welcome to San Diego Market Movers, and I am sitting with Melissa Sophia. What's up, girl? Hey, how are you? Love to be here. It's so fun, huh? Always. So we're in a strange market from the beginning of the year till now. So what are you doing to set expectations for your sellers now versus maybe six months ago? Oh, absolutely. So six months ago was a totally wild market, and truth be told, it was completely unrealistic yeah it was an imbalanced market and it was so heavy on the seller's side that people were getting offers a hundred thousand to three hundred thousand plus yeah. over list price in a matter of hours or really? days so I think when I speak to my clients then versus now is a completely different story then I would literally say you don't need to do anything you don't need to change your carpet you don't need to paint you don't need to you, we could literally take a picture of the front of your house and it'll sell. Mm. Um, and so now I think it's very important to have very complete conversations with right. my clients about what their expectations are and what their motivations are. So Ooh, that's a good one. Motivation. Oh, motivation is everything. And I think a lot of agents kind of take it really lightly, mm -hmm. but we are not necessarily here to just sell our client's house. We are here to make the dreams for their next chapter come true. 
So whether they're trying to upsize and finally move into the house that has room for them to work from home or whether they are trying to downsize or move out of the state and they need a certain amount of money, I need to tailor the way that I sell their home to what their needs are. Mm -hmm. And if I can accomplish it, then they're going to be happy, right? So I think I always reverse engineer, okay, what are your goals for your next chapter and how can I accomplish those? So for instance, some of my clients have a lot of time and they just really want the money. Some of my clients don't have any time and they're willing to give up a little bit of money to speed. Yeah, for speed. So I can let them know what their options are. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a certain responsibility that comes with what you said when you have to facilitate what their goals are in the future. It's not about just selling this one property. It's the lo- the long term and what exactly. they need for their future of their family. I'll tell you right now, like 100% of my listing appointments where my job is to go there and get a listing to yeah. sell a house, most uh, 100% of my listings, I will go and f- try to find a way for my clients to keep their home. <laughs> <laughs> like, can I make the next chapter of your life, the next life goal that you have happen yeah. without you selling a home? Is it part of your dream to have a portfolio of real estate? Right. So, you know, I think keeping your client's life goals in mind mm-hmm. is the number one job that we have. Yeah, and even bringing that to the surface. It. Exactly. To, so even maybe for their awareness, right? Like, they don't even realize what their real purpose is to sell. A lot of people don't. They just kind of move aimlessly, right? Yes. But this bringing, is literally the post that I put yeah. on Instagram yesterday. I was like, what is the purpose behind your next move? Like, are you buying your next home? Are you selling your next home? Because quick investment. Like, mm-hmm. are you, you know, what is it? And then I can help tailor what I do best to fit your needs. Mm-hmm. I love that. Well, thanks for being here and sharing that tidbit with us. Absolutely. We love it. And thank you guys all so much for watching. Hey everyone, welcome back to San Diego Market Movers. I'm your host, Valley, and I'm here with my good, good friend, Patty Rush. Welcome. Thank you, Valley, for having me. It's, yes. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's so good to see you. Yeah, it's great. It is very good to see you too. Okay, Patty. So I've known you for a long time. Yep. You've always specialized and you're the kind of go-to agent for rural properties. Yep. How's that market going? Because it's different than a city. It's it's very different. You have septic systems and wells, and you have to know who to call to have it all inspected. And repaired if and something happens. Absolutely. Gotta... It's just a very how, how far your clearance has to be from your structure. Um, I've done subdivisions, mm-hmm. and I do a lot of land, and I do a lot of rural property. I know people in San Diego, some of my clients are scared to death of fire insurance because out in rural areas, they say it's so expensive because they hear that. It's not really that expensive, is it? It is. It is expensive? It is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Depending on where you are, um, for anybody who has access to USAA, uh-huh. um, they're still insuring in Alpine and Humboldt, depending on where it's located, what, what the fire rating is. And that's, mm. the big, that's the big caveat, is the fire rating. Um, most of your properties with wells now have a fire hydrant on okay. the property. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just... Um, for insurance, it makes it more appealing for the mm-hmm. insurer. Do you feel like a lot of people are navigating more to those farther out areas? Here's the thing, is that you have a higher um, fire insurance. But after COVID mm-hmm. and everybody was working from home, mm-hmm. nobody wants to be in town anymore. So right. we saw a huge influx for families moving to um, Hamul mm-hmm. and Alpine and Ramona and East Escondido. Mm-hmm. All the, even Dulzura. Um, Descanso, Campo, Pine Descanso. Valley. With gas prices going up, they've come back to mm. Humboldt and Smart, yeah. yeah, in 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 town Alpine. So. Is there any tricks to buy? Uh, is there any downside to buying out? No, in I love. I live yeah. in Humboldt. I love it. I love not hearing my neighbor flush the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's the privacy. So it's not so many red lights or you're sitting behind. It's just pretty easy to get home. It's just peaceful, peaceful. drive. It is. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the it's, quiet country life, but you're still close to whatever you want in San in, Diego. In Hamul, you've got downtown in about 20 to 25 minutes, depending where you're at. Um, to get to Coronado is the same distance. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's a very easy freeway um, accessible. Mm-hmm. What I like about rural properties is that you can buy a rural property with zero down you you can mm-hmm. and you can explain it's a that. usda loan it, i mean it's pretty cut and dry i have to have a 580 credit score which is pretty doable it should be yes and then um you know
know, property just has to be in the bounds of a rural, what they quote, quote unquote, rural area, um, yeah. which sometimes it's even closer to the city than you think. So that's what I like about it is being able to give my clients that option. And I'm sure you know how, because you've, you've done lending too. So you have that I background have. to help people. Yep, I do. And you're, you're talking pretty much most of um, Hummel, all of Alpine, odd little pockets in Marietta. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, yeah. And there's it, it, all of Ramona, mm -hmm. um, most parts of Poway all qualify for that. I think it's really important, though, to be, if you're going to sell a property in a rural area, to have some have some knowledge about these septic systems and and wells because there's just some little well, things about Well, when you write the offer, you better know. Yeah. <laughs> better know to ask for the septic to be pumped and certified mm -hmm. because just pumping it, doesn't tell you that the leach fields That's, are clear. Those are some expensive repairs, right? Um, a leach field repair for a whole system is about eight thousand. Yeah, that's not. That's and and a tank repair is about fifteen hundred to two thousand, depending. So, I mean, they're big. They're huge. Almost as big as this room. Some of these yeah. tanks, a fifteen hundred uh -huh. gallon tanks, you know, the wear and tear will wear the concrete down. Mm -hmm. So you have to every so often have them maintained. I love it. I love that your approach and you have that market in rural areas kind of, kind of sealed up that you're the go-to i know that mm -hmm. for sure in san yep. diego so yep. thanks for sharing patty thanks thank for you. being here thank you for having me thank you for watching yep. welcome to san diego market movers and today we are here with stephen ennis welcome thank you thanks for having me yes of course so i want to get to know you i want to tell our audience about you how do you stand out as a realtor in the crowd of the sea of realtors here in san diego that's a good question, and it is a big sea of realtors. It is. And the way I make myself stand out is I, I show uh, a very, very hard work ethic, uh, determination to uh, achieve uh, not only my own personal goals, but the goals uh, of my clients. Mm -hmm. So in that work ethic, what are some things you do that stand out? Like, give us some actions. What do you do? Um, everything from the grass grassroots level of door knocking, door hangers, uh, to doing cold calls. I do cold calls every single day. I'm a newer agent, so I'm literally starting at okay. the bottom. So I'm having to start to build that foundation, and, yeah. it, and it starts with myself. Um, the team that I'm with, you know, they can give me the tools, but um, without my hard work, I can't build the house. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, I make over 100 cold calls a day. Yeah. Um, the follow up super important. But all of that begins with uh, grounding yourself and actually establishing a, a real solid uh, routine um, and having that determination, that grit mm -hmm. to uh, just keep driving moving forward. Well, you must you're probably going to be pretty successful here coming up because this market is odd in the sense that we're used to having to just be able to post listings and they sell themselves and this market we have to work right we have to go back to work this year and so you know if you have that determination you have that grit you have that work ethic long longevity for mm -hmm. you is probably in your future right yeah absolutely you're correct i mean the market has changed so much just in the six months that i've been in the industry yeah. to where i've seen it on the tailing end the tail end of what was kind of a crazy unusual mm -hmm. market for the last couple of years to where we're kind of getting back to um, you're weeding out the people that actually really are invested in it right. and uh, are, are willing to do the hard work. And the hard work is, uh, you know, turning over, you know, not leaving a single stone unturned and making those calls, making those door knocks and following up and doing everything you possibly can to, uh, you know, it's a win for your clients. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for myself, um, you know, having the tools with my company and my and all the support behind me, it really starts with myself, though. Mm -hmm. Waking up every day, it doesn't matter how much uh, information or news I want to uh, read or, mm -hmm. or educate myself on. Um, it d depends on my determination to put all of that in motion. Where did that come from? Were you an athlete or in the military? Um, I, the two careers I had prior to stepping into real estate um, definitely had schedules very regimented. Okay. Um, so, also I have a family, so uh -huh. that also drives me as oh well. Oh yeah. So okay. Your um, purpose. My purpose. Um, and and if I'm not doing all of the checking all the boxes at the end of each day, right. Going out, going down my to-do list, which I make every single morning. I make a to-do list of mm -hmm. what I need to do. So you made one do. today. Yep, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, and as I go through it, I erase it off my list. Uh, I'm excited to see where you grow from here in the next two, three years. So come back and tell us where, how things are going so we can, you know, learn about your process. Absolutely. It's been really good so far. It's been a, it's been a grind, but uh, I welcome the grind. Yeah, it's a you're challenge. Gonna, you're going to kill it. Well, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me.
Thank you so much for watching. Welcome to San Diego Market Movers. I'm your host, Valley, and I'm sitting with our friend Vincent. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to hear what you have to say about this market and how are you advising sellers in today's market versus six months ago? A lot differently. <laughs> It's very similar to 2007, really has all the same markers, not as extreme, not anywhere near, but pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, two months ago, three months ago, you know, you could price your home 10%, 5% above the last sale and probably end up with four or five offers, mm -hmm. five, 10% above that. Now it's a little bit reversed. You got to look at the last home that sold and really consider going five, 10% below that. Mm. Uh, the market is going down. We did see a biggest drop most likely in the first month or two. But this is a transition period mm -hmm. and a lot of sellers are having a hard time with it because it's hard to see that your home was just worth a certain amount, mm -hmm. but now you know, you're looking at five, 10, 15% below. And that's just to get people in to get an offer. Mm -hmm. So you have to set expectations right up front that look, this is your price, we'll go with it, we'll try it, we'll do the marketing, we'll get the people through the front door, but if we're not getting offers, something is, is amiss, you, how, you need to lower your price. How are sellers accepting that information? Are not taking well, it? <laughs> not well, and, it, 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 it's, uh, and, and rightfully so. I, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you bought something, you think it's worth a certain value, and all of a sudden, two months later, it's 10% less. But if you're motivated to sell, you have to price accordingly. There was roughly two weeks worth of inventory two months ago. Now there's anywhere from three months to five months, depending on where you're at in the valley. Mm -hmm. And what that means is the current inventory is going to take five months to sell. Ooh. So if you have that's different for us, quite a bit different. Well, before you could get it on 15 offers and boom, I had one right. that had 28 offers this year. Yeah. Now you'd be lucky to get 20 people through the front door. Mm -hmm. So if you have 25 competitive homes that are similar to yours, as compared to two months ago, there may be one. Mm -hmm. You have to price based on your 26 competitors, not based on what your your property was worth two months ago, because that's that's no longer valid. So do you think buyer demand has slowed, or do you think inventory has just increased? A little of both, but the buyers that are out there two months ago are still there now. They're just, they're more picky, to, mm -hmm. to put it bluntly. The government, which rightfully so, was trying to slow down, and they did their job. They they wanted to slow down the market. Mm -hmm. They wanted you know to fight inflation. Well, it was it was getting out of hand. I remember at one point I'm like, when does this end? Yeah, it has to, right? Yeah. Can't just keep going forever. But they did what they were trying to do, and, it, and rightfully so, and and it's working. Buyers are very cautious. They've been scared to death, and you know, a matter of fact, I think we're getting another three quarter rate uh, in the next week or two. Uh, you know, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, but yeah. I believe probably the first year or somewhere in there, the Fed will back off on that a little bit. It'll right. hit the upward swing in the market, which usually happens in the spring. Yeah. And San Diego, we can't build with so many homes here. Yeah. So what's going to happen is the market's going to go back up again. Right. And I always tell people, you can always change your rate. You can't change their house so easily. You know, it takes a month to change your rate. That's right. And if the house of your dreams is there somewhat in your budget and you're in your price range and available, go for it because we can change your rate later. That's right. Well, the word of the day is adjustable rate mortgage. <laughs> They're back. Yeah. Uh, but no, you can get a jumbo loan uh, now, five or seven, uh, seven uh, year adjustable mm -hmm. rate for anywhere from four two to about five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just bought the four and a half today. Yeah. Oh, because who knows what next week will hold. So we lock in now. It's going to go up. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, awesome. Thank you for sharing all that information with us, and we appreciate having you here on the show. Absolutely. Thanks, sir. Thank you guys for watching. Welcome to San Diego Market Movers. I'm your host, Valley, and I'm sitting with Nikki and Vinny. Welcome, ladies. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for being here. So we have a question, and yes. we're asking everybody on our couch, you're, you guys are the experts. We're in a new market. Yes, we mm -hmm. are. How yeah. are you advising sellers in this market now versus how you advised them six months ago? Well, there are three things that are really important, which is time, price, and condition of home, okay. right? The time, and Nikki, you can uh, talk about this because we do a lot of listings. The time, you know, uh, six months ago, properties would sell what? In three hours? Yeah, before it even hit the market. <laughs> right, and now we're talking about 30 days. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to set the right expectation for the seller. Right. What you hear on, on the news, you know, they're three months behind. Right. So they're, they're not hearing current information. We're in the market 24-7. Mm -hmm. So that's real important to set that expectation. The other expectation is price. You know, six months ago, what would we get in houses? 100K over, 20 people bidding. 
I mean, it, it was ridiculous, mm-hmm. right? And it was not sustainable. So right. in mm-hmm. our opinion, I'm glad that that's over. Because although sellers were excited, but it was frustrating for them too. So they would f- throw a price on the market and people would come because there was no inventory. Mm-hmm. The inventory is a little higher now, but we're still only three months of inventory versus six months. Yeah. So just setting the price is very important because mm-hmm. we, we're we not into the market where the interest rates are so high now, people are not gonna give you 20, 30,000 above. Mm-hmm. So we want, to coll- we want to create interest. And what's most important with that, how do we create interest? Setting the right price. Exactly, mm-hmm. and usually lower than what the market is saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The other thing is condition. So it used to be where buyers, because there was such little inventory, they would come and they would do whatever, mm-hmm. you know? Now we're finding because things are so much more expensive, mm-hmm. you know, pr- properties are expensive, uh, um, labor is expensive, materials are expensive, and people don't have time, they don't want to do all that. Yeah. So they'll sacrifice square footage for condition. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what we did on our list, last listing is we actually had a home inspection. Mm-hmm. And Mickey can speak a oh, little bit. Oh, you had a home inspection prior to prior. Agent. Okay. Yes. Just to ensure everything was exactly where it, where it needed to be. Uh, gave us like the the security and knowing okay the home is in good condition condition we can move forward and and price it accurately exactly so you know a lot of people want all the bells and whistles but not everyone wants the most modern mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the the listing we have currently or one of the listings it's more eclectic it's more rustic and there's a there's a market for that as well right. but you know you don't want uh, leaky pipes and you know surprises so that's what we've done. So, and and staging is very important. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay for staging, just moving some furniture around. So that's how we're setting the expectations, making them know that the client, if they know what to expect, then they don't have surprises, it's easy. Okay, so you said, I like how you kind of chopped it up for us. So there's three things that you do. One is the timing, yes. right? And I, I want to touch on that. Yes. Do you think 30 days is a long time? No. 20, <laughs> 27, 30 right. days? Right. We Take tell our clients, like, what happened six months ago is not normal. We are mm-hmm. in an abnormal market. Absolutely. Now we're just heading towards normal. So. Yes. Can you imagine if we kept going where we I would can. be right no. now if we kept that going? That's why I'm saying I'm so, I'm so excited for it because – you know now buyers can actually negotiate mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they can get some closing costs but you're not you don't have a crash mm-hmm. you know and then when you hear the the people on the news it's so frustrating because we're out there mm-hmm. there are certain areas yes there have been price adjustments but it's not 2008 right mm-hmm. right and i think that's what happens people get so fearful of that that they don't do anything yeah mm-hmm. and now for us i think it's the time to take advantage of the market buyers can actually negotiate mm-hmm. sellers still getting a wonderful uh, price for their for their property mm-hmm. it's gone up 50 percent in the last two years right. so they still have a lot of equity to deal with right and another point that you touched on is the condition of the home yes. right so i always kind of like to break it down like if you're going to sell something online you would you buy something that's dirty and you know has dim pictures of it or would you buy the one that looks pristine new used but like new yes. you know mm-hmm. which one would you rather buy if they're the same price well you'd want to buy the one that looks exactly nice. right, right the other thing that we offer our clients too it's it's cleaning the house oh, yeah. little things <laughs> that you know it, it's it's you don't think about it but cleaning the windows yeah. you know we have a whole slew of people that that will able will do those services right but you don't think about it and what we tell our clients this is no longer your home this is a product right okay yeah that's hard you have yeah. to it is hard yeah. especially when you've lived there for many years mm-hmm. yeah. but the point is you got to think as a buyer and that's what we try to get them to do okay you're a buyer now walk through your house and it's amazing because they see it totally differently right. yeah they'll always like you said checking the windows like even the window frames Still, can yeah. be yeah. dirty <laughs> and people once you live in a house for so long you, you overlook that <laughs> it's like when you gone nose blind yes. how dirty your house is yes <laughs> Yeah, and, th- exactly. and that's the beauty. That's where our professionalism comes in and our experience. I we'll love come that. in and we'll look at it with different eyes. You guys right. seem like a full service team. Yes, we've we got a concierge, if you yes. will. Yes. I love it. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of that, that's really interesting. We got this, we have this new service, a concierge, mm-hmm. where let's say that uh, someone's lived in the property for years, mm-hmm. right? And they haven't, they don't have the money, but they have all this equity, but they don't have the cash to refurbish the home. We actually have a service where they'll come in do whatever you want and you can pay out of escrow yeah and you might 
be able to increase Absolutely. your value, sell it for more. So then exactly. that little investment is you actually make more money. Exactly. Return. That's yeah. the only reason we would do it. And if you there pay is it out of escrow? Yes. Yeah, that's amazing. Very yes. amazing. I love that. Yeah, not too many uh, brokerages can offer that. And that's one of the services that we're so proud to offer. Yes. And they're all licensed, bonded. I love Lots that. of experience. Way to go. So we're a one-stop yeah. shop. <laughs> I love it. Way to go. Well, thank you guys for sharing all thank this. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.